Hello YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream, the Pro Pride Hitch, you're all ready to go. What's the big mystery? What's the problems that you may run into when you're hooking up your Pro Pride? I don't think they're problems, but let's show you a couple of things that might solve them. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So it's ready to go. It's all time to go. I have my wheel chocks in still, and I have my RV leveled from when we were inside the RV and it's time to hook up. It's time to take and put that stinger into this receiver. There's a lot of problems, there's a lot of confusion and it's all gotta be solved with basically this jack and these jacks or if you have the, uh, the legacy jacks, the original ones, um, same deal. So why would we want to move any of this stuff to get it hooked up? Well, as you guys remember, on a ball hitch, you just back up underneath the ball and you drop the trailer down on it. It doesn't make a difference if the truck is at an angle this way or if the truck is pointed down this way or if you're coming in from the side. It really doesn't make a difference. This one here doesn't really make a difference either, all except you have to line this up to whatever angle your hitch is. Now in my case, I have my stinger pointed down slightly. Some people have asked about that. Why would you want your stinger down? Why would you have four washers in here and have your stinger point down? Well, when it's pointed down like that, that puts the weight distribution bars lower back here. And if they're lower in the back, that means they have more ability to rise to level things out. So you can actually put more weight distribution to your front axle and back to the trailer axles if you start with more of an incline. So if you've hooked up your weight distribution bars to your vehicle and you're finding that you still haven't put enough back on the front axles, um, that's when you have to adjust that stinger to point down even more. A lot of co contributing factors go into that. Um, that's something that's an entire different video that people have talked about before and that's just you know leveling your truck um, the key thing to remember is not so how much it squats in the back everybody oh it only squatted three inches It only you know I only have half an inch of squat or I have two inches of squat in the back or whatever it has really nothing to do with the back it has to do with everything on the front so you want to get as close as possible to whatever the front was before you started hooking up your trailer. That's all I'm going to say about that. I've probably talked about it too much already. So right now what we need to do is get the RV, the hitch, about the right height as the stinger, as the geese are heading out of here and probably going south. That's what we're going to do too. So the stinger hitch height needs to be known before you start backing up so you can adjust this accordingly. Now, people do that in different ways. Maybe you measured it right as you disconnect it, which I'll talk to you about that also. Uh, I'll show you something that you can, you can do to figure that out. Deal is, is we have a Level Mate Pro. Um, I have those linked in my description. As I have this hitch and these jacks, everything linked in the description, just use that link. But in my case, I have a Level Mate Pro that's connected on here, so I can just recall whatever the hitch height was. It says I need to go down an inch and a quarter. You can see I'm getting close. So there, it says I'm pretty much at the right height, maybe, maybe up a little bit, maybe up a little bit. It, it's sometime delayed. Yeah, just up a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's say you don't have the Level Mate Pro. What are you going to do? Well, you're just going to go to the, the height that it was whenever you disconnected it. Do you have to measure? Do you have to know? Not really. And, and basically, when I show you how to disconnect this, you're going to want to keep everything as close as possible to that when it comes to these jacks. Once you disconnect it, if it slides out the way that I'm going to show you that it should slide out, then at that point, these jacks 
should not be touched because you know then this is at the correct angle that it needs to be for that stinger to slide in and that's something that a lot of people don't do uh, a lot of people once they get you know when you're disconnecting it it slide it slams out or it jerks out or something like that it should be a nice gentle exit from this receiver if you can do that then you don't have to touch the jacks or the hitch head all you have to do is just bring your trailer back to the level that it was at when it's time to go for that to go back in so right now we know we have pretty close to the right hitch height and the reason I say pretty close because I just told you don't touch anything well we did we we installed these new uh, version 2 jacks on here which I did a video of that if you want to go back to sh it shows you how to retrofit and put these on but as far as backing this in there's a lot of things that could happen maybe you're not at the same ankle as you were when you you pulled in maybe you um, are now you know there's a new neighbor that's moved in and you can, and you can't get at the same angle maybe you have to turn it to get in not a problem it's not an issue again with small adjustments you can get this backed in with no problem so let's go ahead and get this thing backed up and pulled up into it and I'll show you what it looks like one of the things I neglected to say is and you probably heard is my trucks running well it's a gas truck why would I want to warm up my gas truck when you first start your vehicle the idles real high it's in a cold start mode and until it's fully warm you're gonna have a high idle and whenever you're making small adjustments back here it does make a difference if your vehicle is high idle you know you let off the brake just a little and the thing lurches and it jumps that far instead of that far so I like it to where the idle is real mild real low so it makes it easier to get in here now the trucks not loud if you have a diesel a real loud truck or something like that I suggest you don't tick off your neighbors and let it idle for 20 minutes before you start backing up. And ideally, if I wasn't shooting the video, it only takes about five minutes of running before I can start moving it without it lurching. So let's go ahead and get this in. So what am I looking at whenever I'm doing this? Well, I'm making sure that everything is lined up as straight as possible. The hitch head is neither too far to the left or too far to the right. It's kind of in the middle of everything. Whenever I'm putting in the stinger, you can see I'm, I'm a little crooked even. I'm a little bit off here. Well, you would think, oh, I need to push it over this way. Well, no, because that changes the angle the wrong way. You want to be here. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that I see a lot of people doing, and I do not suggest this unless you don't care. Don't let your wife, your kid, or even yourself hold push touch that hitch head at all while you're backing the vehicle up because this thing will pivot and move in a second and cause all kinds of removal of fingers or pinching or breaking of hands you don't want to be anywhere near this whenever it's backing up now with that said there's been times where I've been real close to where I need to be and my wife has had me stop the truck put take her foot and push the hitch head maybe to the left or to the right just a little bit to make sure that it lines up okay. Now I can see right now just from you know me doing this multiple times it's low. Look how high this is versus this. Not a big deal. We'll raise the jack. It's all about the preparation more than it is the actual motion of getting this in here. Again this should be this square this flat should be perfectly perpendicular to this flat this plane you know this invisible plane here to this I can see there's this one slightly turned off this way but not enough that's why they have this big cone area now the other thing you can do which I suggest and I do all the time is use silicone spray because it doesn't make a mess it doesn't cause any problems with dirt buildup and I just hit everything real quick is this to make it to where it goes on easier? A little bit. Does this make it come off a little easier? Yeah, a little bit. But mainly, I just want to protect the metal. That's bare metal to metal contact, except for the coating, the powder coating that's on there. And you don't want that rubbing and scratching any more than it has to. Uh, again, once we separate this, when we get to our destination, um, it helps with that. Sometimes it aids with that too. So let me go ahead now that I'm real close here. I'm going to back up a little further and we'll talk about what you should be looking at when you're backing up and what it looks like at that point. All 
All right, so you can see I'm pretty much in this. All I've got to do is just continue backwards and it will engage the way it needs to be. But that's not what this video is necessarily about. This video is about you not having the correct angle. And let me show you what it looks like when you don't have the correct angle. I'm already bound up right now. With that little movement that I just made with the jack, I'm already bound up to where it's twisted too far and it's hitting. So it's not going to slide in. So what you want to do is make sure again, everything is nice and loose up until it's time to push it in. As far as what we're seeing here, I see more gap in the bottom than the top. So what I'm going to do, raise my jack just a little bit. See how there's movement going on there? You, you could be potentially bound up because you have the wrong angle. But if you're this far in, you should be okay. So it's all about adjusting the jacks. And I'm talking about all three jacks. The left, the right, and then your main tongue jack. And that's going to get you where you need to be. If you're at an extreme angle to where the stinger is pointed way down or way up, it still can happen. You can still get it in there. We have been in some rough situations to when we unhook, uh, you can tell. I think that 90% of the problem is people don't prepare the hitch for the stinger to go into it. They just figure it's the ball style and it should just fly in there. All I got to do is put it underneath the ball and drop it. I'm going to tell you that putting the trailer on the ball hitch of the truck, it's been done so many times, it is so easy. It's in so many, you know, so many different ways you can hook it up. The thing is, is this one takes just a little bit of effort for it to be just as easy. And a lot of people don't understand why isn't it sliding in? Why, why is it twisted? Why is it pointed the wrong way? These links right here, the, the pivot links, they need to be as straight as possible. This needs to be as straight as possible with the trailer and the truck needs to be as straight as possible with all of it when you back into it. However, that's not always the case. And I'm going to go to a clip that shows you the extreme angles that you can put this in you know, as far as backing in and connecting it. So I got you guys set up underneath the uh, hitch of the RV. I think I might have to come up with the hitch maybe, but uh, we'll try this angle and see how it works out. that's pretty much it I mean it's in there um, you just have to uh, do the over the center latches now I don't know why people think oh you can't go at a weird angle and you've got to be on level ground and well my driveway slopes up my truck is facing down basically in this back here and I mean you can see the angle that I'm at the RV is relatively level I haven't really raised or lowered the jack I did take the stabilizers off but I mean that that's not difficult i i think that the the rumors and the myths and everything that are being thrown around out there are just from people that's never used these things because i'm i was a kind of a believer of some of those myths so you can see as far as the left and right angles you know coming in not exactly straight on with the trailer it can be done and it's not very difficult to do again as long as those two magical planes those invisible planes that i talked about the one for the end of the stinger bar and the one for the hitch head as long as they are perpendicular to each other and you don't have any weird angles going on everything should slide together perfect but even if you're like this and this might be pointed down a little bit that cone that's built into the receiver head 
will allow the funneling of that stinger to get it to where it needs to be. But still, adjustments need to be made on the jack. So let's go ahead and finish off this backing up, this getting into, and at that point, I will show you uh, what it looks like when we disconnect and what you should look for. So whenever you disconnect, and once you're completely out of the hitch, what it should look like when it's coming out, and uh, know that then you shouldn't touch your jacks, just level your RV, and you'll be good to go when it's time to hook up. So let's go ahead and back this up the rest of the way. We'll latch it up and we'll go from there. All right, pretty simple. At this point, it's all the way in. There's no way that you need any more adjustment or anything to uh, get it any more secure than it already is, except for whenever you put your over the center latches on. Okay, so the over the center latches, we all know how that works. You just kinda, and use your leg. Make sure the socket is firmly over the over center latch. Just use your leg, lean into it. You can see it pulls it nice and tight up against there. My wife always does her side because Again, it's easy for her. There. This is one of the things that you'll notice that's not available on a lot of the snap-up bracket style. Um, my wife didn't want anything to do with the snap-up brackets because it was it was pretty torturous. You get hurt doing it. With this, it's pretty simple. And once this key goes into place, we're all set. So let's go ahead and talk about the weight distribution part of things since that's part of the hitch up process. All right, so normally I would wait until I've got everything hooked up to do this, but I want to cover this while we're still working with this area. So at this point, everything's hooked up. You're safe to go ahead and not only lower your tongue jack, but also take out your wheel chocks because as long as your vehicle is secure from moving, um, you're not going anywhere because you are locked in solid on the stinger. So let's go ahead and drop this down. You'll see some movement with the tongue jack normally, and that's normal. Um, you know, you, the, the trailer may have moved a little bit whenever you had backed into it. So don't be alarmed if you see your, your trailer move or the tongue move or the jack move when you're doing this, because again, that's pretty normal. And at this point, I'm going to stop the tongue jack so we don't have to listen to that anymore. And the weight distribution bars. So basically, you're going to be looking at from here to the bottom of the jack and the height that's needed to get your vehicle level. Now, in our case, I know we don't need very much. We have a truck that's overbuilt for this trailer. But the peace of mind we want with no sway, that's why we go with this. So in this case, all i got to do is Again, electric drill, you can use a, a three-quarter inch wrench. It doesn't make a difference. And you're just going to uh, pull these up. Now, some people do this with the tongue jack down because there's already height. Well, the, you can do that. Um, that saves some strain on these jacks if you want to do it that way. Um, I, I, I do it both ways. I've, had, I've done it both. I've done it with the, the vehicles or the uh, trailer supported by the tongue jack. And I've also done it just like this. So you can see the nice thing about these new jacks is the more tension I put on here, the more compressed these things get. So the old legacy jacks, they would get taller as you put more height to the uh, weight distribution bars. And I'm talking about right here, the weight distribution bar height, not up front. And as far as the tension that's required to put the weight back on the front end, you know, it's going to vary. That That's something entirely different. That's setting up your weight distribution. But... I just wanted to show you what it looks like whenever we're connected and we're ready to go. And this is pretty much it. I think we run about three inches, three and a half inches here. That might be just slightly more at this point, but it, it's the way that we roll down the road and we know that we can do it safely. I don't suggest that you necessarily drive the way that I drive, but I have driven this at speeds in Texas where the speed limit's 85. My trailer tires are rated for 85. They're one load range higher than what the trailer calls for. And of course the truck, it, it can easily pull it. Um, 70 miles an hour, I do that. It's a light trailer. This is an ultra light. 
we're only about 7,800 pounds when we're fully loaded when we travel down the road. Um, we could be as heavy as 8,800 pounds. And the bed of the truck, we usually keep about 800 pounds in the bed of the truck. So as far as rolling weight going down the road, uh, we've never been any heavier than 19,000 pounds total, truck and trailer. And with this hitch and being able to move as you need and have the peace of mind with trucks going around you or passing in the opposite direction, especially out west, when the speed limit's 80 in each direction or 75 in each direction, um, this thing really don't move around. Even through the winds of South Padre Island on the way down to there, um, not an issue. So the peace of mind of having this hitch really makes a difference. I'm gonna reiterate one thing before we get to the disconnect portion of this. And that is, if you could, the link in the description. Please utilize that and that will continue to allow us to do videos just like this and show you even more hitch up tricks <laughs> if needed. But let's go ahead and snap over to about five hours away. For you guys, it's gonna be instantaneous, but we're getting ready to go over to Hershey PA and I wanna show you how this thing gets disconnected. Welcome to Hershey, <laughs> we made it. Although the sun didn't seem to follow us, it's awful warm today, it's nice. So now it's time for us to disconnect. Now, basically what you're seeing at here is the chains are disconnected, the, the, the uh, seven ways disconnected, um, the safety chain or the safety cables disconnected, and we have the foot of the jack, the main tongue jack. We just have that starting now. So once you're in this position, of course our wheels are chalked also. Once you're in this position, what you're gonna look for is this area right here. And if you look close enough, as I raise the tongue jack, you're going to see that there's a separation that happens right here. And that's when you know it's about ready to start pulling forward. But first, let's lower the jacks, the weight distribution jacks, as they have full tension on them still. So obviously, same way that you tightened them up, pull the pin, go ahead and now whenever I'm lowering them I'm just lowering to the point where it's loose underneath so and what I mean is it, it's not stiff like this see how the, it's pretty stiff still now look see how loose that is that's where to start that's a starting point all right so now that those are loose and the bars are free which I gotta redo mine a little there we go um, when Heidi did hers, it put a little bit more tension on mine. So now that they're loose and free, you're going to maybe go back to them still and loosen them or raise them as needed. So we'll keep the drill out. And now since the wheel chalks are in position, we'll go ahead and take these pins out for the over-the-center latches. Move those out of the way. Um, what I like to do where I put them at is down on the... I like to put them right in that area there, which you can see when she backs off the camera. It's just the yoke mount. So now that we have all of this pretty much ready to go, we just have to do the over the center latches to disconnect, see there, and there. Real simple, don't even have to be on the other side to do that. So the only thing keeping us connected at this point is just the tension that's between the stinger and the hitch head. So let's go back to this critical area that I was just talking about and watch whenever we get a gap here. That way you know that the weight of the ball is up off of the hitch head and that you're starting to release the pressure from the vehicle. Did you see that movement there? It was very little, but that pretty much tells me that we're real close to this being completely disconnected to where it's loose. So let me go ahead and go a little bit more with this. See now at this point I'm raising the vehicle and I can tell I'm raising the vehicle. So I want to go back down and you can see that movement again that the ball is actually moving or the, the, the tongue is moving on the ball, you, you want to be right in that sweet spot. So now what we'll do is we'll have Heidi get in the truck and I'm going to have her pull forward just a little bit to get this to start to disconnect 
and we can tell if there's a drag on it and if we need to make adjustments to these bars. Now you can see we do have a rise here so the truck is pointed up so this is one of those situations where you may be at a little bit different angle than what you expect to be at. So audio pull up just a little bit. Okay so you can see at this point she's she's the reason that it kind of jerked there is because it was stuck a little that's one of the reasons we put silicone on it but you can see here that it's still not loose it's not loose and I'm putting weight back on the truck and if I lift the jack I'm putting weight back on the truck or lifting the truck so what you want to do now is again look at this angle I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but the top of this is much closer to the RV than the bottom of this. So we're going to go ahead and make adjustments. And then how you do that is, well, you're going to tighten up the jacks because you want that. See that? It, it, it now is starting to point to where this is straight up and down. It's the same on the other side. Okay, so what we got here is it getting real close to being straight up and down. So we're going to adjust the tongue jack again. And you can see this rise. I don't know if you've seen it. We'll put you back so you can watch it. Watch how much it rises. And this thing is pretty much free at this point. See how loose it is? So now she can pull forward with no problems. See that? So now we're loose, we're completely loose. And this is the angle you're going to keep your jacks at. So whenever you back back into it, you just have to know the height to put this or this to match. Basically, in this case, I know that the ground's not gonna change. I'll be able to back in straight on, just like we are here. So what I'm going to do is go to my Level Mate Pro and I'm going to set, again, link will be down in the description, I'm going to set my hitch height so I can recall it later. But in your case, if you don't have that, you want to measure basically from the square here, the bottom of the square, to the ground, or from the ground to the top of the square, however you want to do it. And whenever you're ready to go and your trailer is ready to be raised or lowered, for your stinger, you'll know what to lower it to or raise it to. So I hope this helped out. Again, the links are down in the description. If you guys decide you want to run with this, uh, I appreciate it. Support the channel and use our link that tells ProPride that we're doing our job and we're teaching them about what it's like to have this hitch. And I'll tell you, it was a dream ride over like I expected. So as always, guys, we hope to see you out there. Bye.